In this video, we provide some uh, universal rules to try to predict spin-spin coupling in uh, any molecule. All right, so here we have uh, the three molecules that we have looked at in the prior videos, uh, where we've seen splitting patterns and how they emerge. Okay, so let's see uh, if we can identify some generalities here. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, NMR spectrum of this molecule, the proton NMR spectrum of this molecule, we see that HB is split into a doublet by the action of one H2A. And H of A is split into a doublet by the action of one H sub B. Okay. Here we have that uh, H of B is exactly the same, but we have that H of A is split into a triplet by the action of two H sub Bs. And here we see that H of A is split into a quartet by the action of three uh, H sub Bs. Right. So it looks like the splitting patterns follow an N plus one rule. Okay where uh, this predicts the spin multiplicity, so how many peaks you have, and n is the number of NMR active nuclei that are caused in the splitting. Okay, so let's see if this actually pans out. There is that A to B here is a doublet, right? So that signal is equal to two, and the reason is that uh, uh, you have a doublet because there's only one A to A, so n is equal to one, causing the splitting. Okay, let's analyze other cases here. Let's take a look at, at the at the uh, splitting pattern of A to A in this molecule. Okay, A to A there happens to be a triplet, so three peaks, and the reason is that you have two A to Bs uh, splitting that that, uh, that signal, and again that originates a triplet. And you can see how this uh, rule is generic. We go here, you get a quartet because there's three peaks that are or three uh, NMR active nuclei that are actually splitting your pattern. Okay, so we can always use the N plus one my, plus one rule to predict whether the signal of a, a particular NMR active nucleus will be a singlet, double, triplet, quartet, or, or what have you. Okay, right, So that's the uh, N plus 1 rule. Now this only applies for NMR active nuclei that are within three bonds. Okay, So that is going to be uh, the rule that we're going to go by. If you have uh, other NMR active nuclei that are uh, beyond three bonds, then you will uh, we're, we're going to assume that there's no splitting. And the last thing is that, again, uh, only NMR active nuclei are able to split signals. Other atoms that are not NMR active nuclei will not be able to split uh, signals. All right, so then uh, the question is, well, what about the relative intensities? We have that when, uh, for doublets, the relative intensities of the uh, peaks are 1 to 1, triplets 1, 2 to 1, quartets 1, 3 to 3 to 1. Is there a way to predict these uh, intensities, the relative intensities of the peaks, uh, for any generic uh, type of, of uh, splitting. Now the answer is that yes, we can actually do that with the Pascal triangle. Okay, the Pascal tri triangle is a triangle that is just uh, built with ones along the edges. Okay, and then the rest of the positions are caused by the sum of the two numbers that you have on top of you. All right, so again, notice that we're building a, a, a triangle with rows of numbers in which uh, uh, the extrema the terminal numbers are always going to be 1. Okay, but uh, in the interior positions of the triangle, we're going to have that the number that you need there is going to be the sum of the two numbers that you have above. Right, so notice that we need to put here a number, and that number is going to be the sum of 1 plus 1. So that is going to be uh, that row. The next row, the Pascal triangle, is going to have 1s at uh, the edges, and again, the positions in the interior part of the triangle are going to be the sum of the two numbers that you have on top. Three. 3, 1. Like this, we can continue to build the triangle for any dimensions that you want. Okay, so you'll have 1, 1, and this will be 4, 6, 4, and continue to draw uh, more until you wish. Okay, 5, 10, 10, 5. Okay? Now, something important about this Pascal triangle is that this gives you the relative intensities for a given multiplicity. Notice that a doublet will have an intensity 1 to 1, okay? a triplet will have an intensity 1 to 2 to 1, and then a quartet will have an intensity 1 to 3 to 3 to 1. Okay, and so forth, if you have a quintet or a sextet or a septet, you can actually see uh, how those, that signal will turn out. All right, so uh, to try to then uh, uh, wrap these things up, uh, we're actually going to uh, study here uh, molecule and see if we can apply all that we have studied to that molecule. Okay, we can uh, go back to the uh, example of need methanol. Okay, try to see if we can predict here the splitting patterns. Need methanol is going to have uh, this molecular structure, and we're looking at the proton NMR uh, for this molecule. 
there will be two signals because there's two uh, protons that are in different electronic environments. Okay, that proton sees a different electronic environment than those three protons. But each one of these three protons sees the same electronic environment because we always have here uh, rotation around single uh, single bonds. Okay, so now two signals. Okay. Okay, we're going to draw here uh, the one for the CH3s. And we're going to draw here the one for the OH. Now, uh, the relative intensities of the signal, so regardless of the number of peaks that you have, when we integrate the area, that should be 3, and that should be 1, because we only have one uh, nucleus uh, contributing to the signal, but we have three nuclei contributing to the signal. OK, so the last thing that we actually need to uh, uh, solve for this puzzle is just the splitting patterns and the relative intensities within those uh, peaks. Right, let's start with this, uh, the signal to, to the CH3. We have to look for uh, any more active nuclei that are within three bonds of that signal. Okay, so we have that this is the other uh, any more active nucleus, and it's within one, two, three bonds of the signal. So this signal will actually be split into a doublet by one uh, proton there. Okay, so that is going to be simply a doublet of relative, intensi relative intensity one to one. Okay, and the integral of that area is going to be equal to 3 because there are 3 protons contributing to that signal. Okay, what about the signal due to OH? Well, uh, this signal is going to be split by the action of 3 NMR active nuclei that are within 3 bonds. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so uh, that's going to lead to a quartet. Okay, so 3 NMR active nucleus split a signal into a quartet. Okay, and the relative intensities are going to be 1 to 3 to 3, to 1. Okay, and the integral of this peak is going to be equal to 1 because you only have one in our NMR active nucleus contributing to the overall signal. Okay, so uh, these are kind of the rules for spin-spin coupling and uh, you'll have a few problems in the homework where you'll be able to get more training uh, on this type of splitting patterns.